Hey everyone! Nerd alert! In the March update video, I mentioned that I spoke with a couple of the artists about their process of turning a 2D design into a 3D model. And here's our chat. Get ready for some boring technical stuff. Um, all right. Clip. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My name is David B. Reddick. You'll find me on LinkedIn or wherever I go. I'm currently a CG supervisor uh, at Pipeline Studios. Um, so I currently work. No, my normal day job is working on different productions. And I'm a 3D artist. I was a teacher for a while as well. I kind of did it all. I'm a jack of all trades. I worked in the game industry, worked in the animation industry, film industry, all that good stuff. But um, my main specialty is turning things 2D into 3D. I am a 3D modeler with a focus on character modeling. Um, I've been in the industry for 10 years now. I originally went to college for animation with plans of working in the 2D industry. But when we got to the 3D portion in school, I just fell in love with modeling. Pretty much every project I've worked on so far is like for toddlers or like children. So this is a nice change, getting to do something that's more adult focused. Were you familiar with uh, undergrads uh, when you applied for this 3D modeler gig? It's one of the reasons I'm actually in the industry. I love the show. I love that style of animation. The style, like the more realistic proportions and stuff, that's pretty much what I do as well. So it was actually a friend of mine who sent me the job listing. I was just casually looking for something freelance and uh, he didn't know I was a fan. But when I saw the job description, I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's crazy. What are the chances? So. I knew I had to apply, so here I am. <laughs> I, I was a I was a Teletoon retro guy late at night watching all the old cartoons and stuff like that. So it was always like Clone High, undergrads, all that stuff, and they would just play on loop. I was at the perfect age for that. Right, like I was in college. Here's undergrads, and I was like, holy, this is my show. Gimpy is my is my go to guy forever. <laughs> like hide behind the computer screen, talk about Star Wars was the thing. Except for me, it was Ghostbusters. So it was very relatable at the time. So I used to like, it used to be just on loop um, right beside all the other Teletoon late at night shows. So very familiar with that. And I have some buddies too as well, which, you know, we acted like the undergrad kind of crew back in college. Cringy now to say, but back in the day, that's what we were vibing for. So it, <laughs> so when I saw, obviously, the, the project, I was just like, oh my goodness. And I saw the Kickstarter, you know, when it was starting up. And then I was like, oh man, wouldn't that be great to work on that? Lo and behold, <laughs> here I am. Lo and behold, six years later. <laughs> hey, that's if if I if I could say anything to the people watching about development, it never goes the way you want it to. It's never as fast as you want it to be. I've been on projects that have lasted way longer than that. That you know, try to see the light of the day. I've been working. I've worked on projects that got canceled completely, and as long as a project keeps going, it's still alive and it's still coming. It just takes. Sweet time to make it perfect. And technology getting better along with it only means it's going to look better when it does come out. As far as creating this NITS model from 2D designs from the show, where do you even start uh, your process of taking on that challenge? You usually start by crying a little bit in the chair. Turning anything 2D to 3D is always a, a one week or two weeks of nightmares of thinking about how to turn it into 3D and then actually starting to do it and then figuring out your nightmare is actually worse than what you thought it was and then trying to figure it out again. Basically, I, you know, I take a look at the reference sheet. It's important, like any 3D model and, you know, everybody has a character, like most TV shows should have character sheets for their characters to show different angles and views. We gave you a turnaround of Cal. Obviously, it, it was not designed uh, with 3D in mind. Where do you, how do you, how do you even begin? So it's, pretty standard. I think probably how most modelers would start. I would just bring in that turnaround and actually block out the proportions of the model using those orthographic views. But then, like you mentioned, it wasn't designed with being 3D in mind. So then you get in and just kind of work on the details, make it look like the actual character. I was lucky that there is so much reference material for the model. So yeah, it gave me a good idea of how to get it looking in the three quarters, which I guess is usually the most important. Yeah, with undergrads, it's very rare that the character appears in either complete profile or front view. Uh, yeah. So yeah, three quarter, it's uh, it's like 90%, uh, at least from this, the series, it was 90% of the time is three quarters because that's that was the angle that the characters looked best in. Now that they're in 3D, 
who knows maybe we'll finally get some yeah. some we'll be able sure. to get a little more diversity in in the views that we get of these guys even it's a it's a little difficult when you're starting with a three quarter view because normally in 3d you would start with the front straight front on view and then a straight side view so actually with with nits i would start with the side view a little bit to get the side shape because it was a perfect flat side and i was like okay let me i'll start with this and then you know i start building out that kind of silhouette i don't even render it fully at first i just look at a flat color view and go does that silhouette look like that and then mm -hmm. i keep editing until it gets as close as possible and there's always tweaks there's it's never going to be perfect on the first pass you do it again and again and again and then you start seeing that character in the one view and then you go and mess it up by doing another view. And then you're like, okay, now I messed it up completely. Let's go back. So it's a lot of going back and forth. Start with the main view that you're going to see a character about like 80% of the time, then start adjusting all those other views. And you can never get it 100% in just a single model. So what we end up doing eventually is, you know, you start making blend shapes for the different views. If uh, everybody out there has ever watched Spider-Verse or all those other cartoons, You'll notice that you'll see a character from one view and then on another view, you'll be like, it looks like it lines up, but really they had to do a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure like the shape changes and the, and the nose extends on this view, but on this view, the nose is backwards here. And, and that's always the challenge with uh, turning anything 2D to 3D is that normally if you look at especially older cartoons, you'll get like turnarounds that have like this this so there'll be big spaces in between, but in 3D, there is no spaces you can do every little increment around. So then you have to start rotating that character mm -hmm. and seeing how it looks at all those different angles. And then you'll, you'll start tweaking slightly. What did you find uh, most challenging about modeling Cal in particular? Probably specifically with Cal was the hair, just because a lot of the stuff you can kind of, you know what a hoodie looks like from all angles or what even the face, but yeah, the hair, it's just kind of awkward trying to get it to work from multiple angles. You're trying to match it up in one angle, but it doesn't work in another. So specifically for Cal, that was the, the one area that took me a bit more uh, time. Well, I think you even brought up during the process that his hair, the tuft of hair flips sides from, you know, in the show from angle to angle. Right. Um, and yeah, I think you you came up with that solution of, uh, well, we're gonna, you know, have we'll have two copies of his hair, depending on which angle you're seeing him from because it just doesn't it doesn't work in in true 3d to have his hair just stay the same way if you're doing a full full rotation right uh, yeah at, at, at one point his hair would just start to look very weird what was the least fun parts of nits uh, it's it's the weirdest statement it's how chubby he is because it's like he's he's chubby but he's also you know, got a stick, you know, he's very flat in shape and stuff like that. So you don't want to make him too fat. You don't want to make him too skinny. And at certain angles, you're like, oh, that belly sticks out too much, but it's got to be a little bit of a belly. But so how do you shape him? So trying to shape around his torso was very interesting. And I'd say I spent a little bit of time there making sure it's like, you know, looking at pictures of dudes with bellies online. My internet search history is messed up forever now, <laughs> but trying to see how that shape is. But definitely also a big challenge was the nose. The nose is big, very, very big. And it has such a unique shape that is very undergrads. You would see that nose and be like, that's an undergrads character straight <laughs> up. So trying to make sure that that nose shape was styled exactly the way it is and look good from the front and the side and the angle views was a bit of a challenge, but you get there. The challenge for any 3D artist is when you're starting to build a model and you don't see the final picture in your head. But then once you get a big detail like the nose, you're like, ah, I could see it now. Yeah, I can see it. And then you build the rest around it and you're like, ah, now it's coming together. Getting feedback is so important on this stuff. One thing I can uh, tell people is just that we go through so many more rounds of changes, edits and fixes than, than anyone ever thinks behind yeah. the scenes. You think it's one or two passes or something. Like no, it's more like, in your, especially in your own brain, like 20 or 30, like edit notes where you write your own notes. I'll close it down for a night, open it back up and I'll be like, okay, I got to tweet this now. Okay, I get it. Or sleepless nights at 3 a.m. Oh, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. I know how to fix the teeth now. It's like doing a sketch and you're trying to really get it. And then you're like, oh, well, I'll throw away this piece of paper and I'll do it again. And you do it a little bit faster and you do it a little bit cleaner and better. And that's the same process in 3D is, you know, I modeled Nitz's head once as a kind of preview. And then I go, 
okay, but now I can do it a little bit better because I'm starting to understand the shapes that I'm trying to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Do it again. And then it looks better. And that's like, all right, here we go. Now we're on a good base. You never cook lasagna good the first time. Your first lasagna is going to be crap. The second lasagna is way better. I know, you know, we ask you to do uh, the cow model. Is there a character that you would have liked to have modeled from undergrads? Yeah, well, Gimpy would be awesome. Just like, it would definitely be a challenge for sure, I think compared to yeah he's the most like stylized so definitely a challenge but yeah that would be fun and then female characters i know there's not many but like yeah yeah we're we hoping to fix that with the movie actually yeah nice. <laughs> we've got some new characters nice thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me uh and more importantly thank you so much for creating uh, an amazing 3D version of Cal. Like we really, everybody that's seen it uh, has fallen in love with it. It's just like, oh my God, like it really looks like Cal. Uh, you that's really awesome. captured the spirit and, but now we get to play around with him in 3D space, which is uh, going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. It was a, a lot of fun to do. So thanks for giving me that opportunity. Nits turned out great. I'm, I really can't wait uh, for that next step now where we take your 3D character that you turned into 3D from 2D and then turn it back into something that looks 2D. Uh, <laughs> that's the question of, you know, why are we trying to uh, utilize 3D with, a, you know, a property that was traditionally animated in 2D, but a lot of the you know, scenes in the script, we want them to feel like a movie. And so there's, there's, you know, set pieces that we want them to be cinematic. We want to have cinematic camera moves. We want the characters to, you know, do a lot of things that we haven't ever seen them do before. And we could do it 2D, but it would be a whole lot more expensive and time consuming. You know, I've been on the Kickstarter and stuff like that. And I just want to remind fans, you know, development takes some time. Just please be patient and stuff like that. As you can see, things are going on behind the scenes. And I'm very fortunate to be one of the people who saw the Kickstarter donated the Kickstarter, been watching, and I'm on the project now trying to help make it happen. So, you know, everyone here is just doing their best to make it happen. And if we're patient and, and you're going to see something amazing. And I can't wait to show you guys along with everybody else here. Thanks so much for watching. And again, a huge thanks to David and Nikki for being such good sports and for their awesome models. I'll see you at the end of April for the next Undergrads Movie Progress Update.